three major stocks that are at 52 week lows that you would probably not guess are there MasterCard, AT&T, and UPS. Let's get into them. MasterCard. Who doesn't know what MasterCard is? Who doesn't have a MasterCard? They are the second largest payment processor in the world, having processed close to $6 trillion in 2021. That is absolutely incredible. $285 billion company. Let's jump right over to the eight pillars. So this is one of my favorite types of pillars to see. I'm just seeing that my five-year PE is high, meaning that it's just expensive. Everything else checks out. And my five-year price to free cash flow is high. Look at these things. They are almost tied together my five-year free cash flow and my five-year PE, which is an awesome thing. I know I have dug into this company before and they are in excellent financial condition. Now let's go through here and just briefly look at some growth that they've had. Now, over the past five years, they have certainly grown. 14 billion, 15.7 billion, 16.3 billion, 16.6 billion, and then 20 billion. I don't like that big jump. So when I so when I do stock analyzer tool, I'm gonna have to factor that in that they had that little bit of a big jump due to Coming out of COVID, uh, maybe people taking on more debt, maybe inflation. So people are using credit cards more. They are buying back shares, which I like to see. Um, now, however, I don't necessarily love to see them at significantly high prices, but let's run Stock Analyzer before I make judgment on that. Total current assets of 15.2 billion and total current liabilities, 12.9 billion. Let's see their total long-term liabilities, $18 billion. This, is, this company is in excellent financial condition. Let's see what the analysts are estimating going forward. Earnings per share into 2026, still nearly 21%. And if we come down to revenue growth, I mean, they are predicted to do 16% revenue growth into 2026. So this company is still growing, even though they're nearly a $300 billion company. So let's pop into Stock Analyzer and see what we're going to price this at. I am going to do a 10-year analysis on this because this is a company that I want to own for a very long time. Do they pay a dividend? 0.6%, 1.82 billion. And based on their free cash flow, and five-year free cash flow, they can absolutely afford this dividend. So let's go to revenue growth. So the analysts are thinking that it's going to be towards that 16% number. So I'm going to go 16% on the high side. I'm going to go eight on the low, and I will go 12 on the mid. Profit margin. I mean, those profit margins are absolutely incredible. So let's go with 41 and 42. 42 might actually be low, but I want to be conservative. I want to see what number is going to spit out, and then I can make adjustments from there. Free cash flow margin, because they align nearly perfectly. Let's go and put in the same numbers. PE, the growth is still there. So I'm going to give them a 15, 17, and 19 PE. I know that Paul would argue that that's high, but they have proven that their growth level expectations based on my expectations is still there. 12 and a half, 15, and 17 and a half percent for my desired annual return. And let's see what we spit out here. Current price is at 293. And I'm sitting somewhere in this range of 154 to 234. And I know that I would be looking at this somewhere around the $180 range. I would probably start taking a peak around 200 and looking to sell some puts, maybe around 180, maybe around 170. But that's pretty much the number I'm looking for. And I am actually going to add this to my watch list here at 190. I'm actually going to put in here 200 on the nose just so I get alerted. And there, it's on my watch list. So next stock, let's go to AT&T. Now, before we get into AT&T, I must say this. They have recently had this spinoff. I need more data. This goes for WBA as well, this, this, um, this spinoff company that they did. I need more data. So no matter what my numbers spit out right now, it's not going to be a go and buy this for me. It's going to be, let me get a couple more quarters and maybe two or three more quarters and say, okay, now I see the direction that they're going in. The problem with AT&T that has always lingered is the debt. So let's get into a little bit. All right, $115 billion company. Let's go to the eight pillars. It ain't good. But remember, guys, they just did that spinoff. So a lot of these things may be skewed in different directions. Five-year PE and five-year price to free cash flow. It's ex exactly the opposite of MasterCard. ROIC, I hate that number. This is a company that has gone out there. Let's go to cash flow statement. And let's go to acquisitions and dispositions. Acquisitions, 2.5, 2.25 billion, 20 billion, 10 billion, 41, 42 billion. They d divested something here. 20 billion, three and a half billion. So what you see is this company does a lot of spending as far as acquiring companies to grow. I do not like that. And I really don't like that when I see the ROIC of 5.4%. That means that to me, when I look at a company that's $100 billion, I'm not going to be able to go talk to the CEO. I can't talk to the CFO. People in investor relations, they're helpful, but they're really not that helpful. That number right there tells me, hey, how does management invest the money that, that, they're, um, that they're spending? 
they're doing it pretty poorly. So that's something that really hits me. Analyst expectations I expect to be bad. Going into the future, as far as revenue goes, they're looking at negative four, negative 2%. Let's run it through a stock analyzer tool and see what we spit out. I have a feeling this is going to be a very, very low number. I'm going to go out 10 years. I am going to put in revenue growth of negative four, negative one, and I'll go positive two. Profit margin. Let's go with profit margin here of, let's go 8.5, 9, and 9.5. Free cash flow margin should equal out over the long term, but um, let's give them a, they are a little bit better in that department. Let's go 9, 9.5, and 10. PE, oh boy, 8, 10, and 12. Don't see a lot of growth out of this company. 8, 10, and 12. And for my desired annual return, I'm going to go with 15, 17.5, and 20. Why? Because if I'm going to make an investment in a company like this, I need to get some really, really good return out of it. Let's see what we spit out. Current price, $16, and it's ranging somewhere between basically 9 and we'll call it 14. So 9 and 14. So if, I mean, it is getting close to that number on the high side if you believe these numbers that I put in over here and you want a 20% return. But to me, again, I need more data coming out. And not only that, we need to talk about something with this company, the dividend. They pay this 11.5% dividend. Free cash flow last year was $14.3 billion. They're, they're paying out $13.3 billion. Now, they're paying out almost half of their five-year free cash flow in dividends. This, to me, is worrisome. Based on, let's go to the debt situation real quick. Look at their debt. Total current assets of $34.5 billion. Total current liabilities of $49 billion. And total liabilities of nearly $300 billion. This company should not be paying an 11.5% dividend. They should be paying down their debt. Uh, they are not doing that because I know if they get rid of that dividend, they're going to get rid of a lot of investors and it's going to crash the stock. And that's exactly what they're thinking. Last stock, UPS, shipping. Shipping companies have come out. We saw FedEx say it. We saw uh, Zim Industries say it, or I think that's their name. They have said, hey, it's going to be very problematic going forward as far as shipping goes, as far as logistics, as far as getting containers, et cetera. So let's go to eight pillars on UPS and be very practical about this. $145 billion company. The debt, I'm going to have to take a look at. It's just overvalued, which is not terribly surprising. Shares, I don't, I don't worry about that at all. It might be from some type of acquisition, but we'll look at it. Dividend, they're paying a 3% dividend. Based on their five-year free cash flow, that is a lot of dividend payment. They are paying $4.29 billion on an average of 5.42 billion. I do not like that. I do not like that. So we're gonna have to figure out what exactly is going on there. Analyst estimates. Okay, there's growth, very, very, very little growth, but there is growth going into the future. There is growth going into the future. Now let's see, go back to that debt. Total current assets of 25 and a half billion, total current liabilities of 17, so that's fine. Total liabilities of 53 billion. It's not the worst. Now remember, this is a very capital intensive business. Trucks, boats, cars, planes, et cetera. This is a very, very capital intensive business. So it's not terribly surprising that this is their debt situation. Let's go to their acquisitions. They did a recent acquisition, but they don't do many acquisitions. They do every year, but they're not substantial. Last five years, 79 million, 1 million, 5 million, 35 million, 1.5 billion. So it's not terribly um, drastic. So let's go to revenue growth. On the high side, I'm going to go with 2%. On the low side, I'm going to go with negative 2%. And right in the middle, I'm going to go with zero. Uh, profit margin. I'm going to put in different profit margins. I'm going to put in seven, um, I'm going to put in six and a half percent on the low side, seven and seven and a half percent on the high side. Free cash flow margin, I'm going to put in the same numbers, seven percent and seven and a half percent. PE ratio, I will put in 12, 14, and 16. I don't really see a lot of growth coming out of this company going forward. I don't see the possibility for growth either. Um, desired annual return. Let's go with 13, 16, and 19. Let's spit it out. 165, and here's your number. Probably around 60 to 70 bucks. I'd probably start looking somewhere in the 70 range at selling puts at much lower prices, probably in that uh, 55 range. That's probably my number. So I'm going to throw this on my watch list right now. Now, guys, these are not the only companies out there that are being decimated. You look at Meta. Meta is a stock that I like, I own, and... It's getting hit badly. AMD, another stock. Just remember this, MasterCard. Every company is susceptible to big falls. No stock is immune. Apple is not immune. Google is not immune. So beware of these, put these on your watch list and you will find good values. Before we go, my name is Mo, I'm a value investor and this is the way that I look at stocks. I take some numbers 
I look at them, I figure out what I want to pay. Is it worth it for me? And then if I get close to my number, I say, you know what? I'm going to go and do a little bit more research into this. I'm going to dig deeper and figure out if this is the right company for me to own. If you want to know more about my process, you need to click this video right here. It will help you in your investing future. I'll catch you on the flippity flop.